Good morning and welcome New Mount Zion Church family and visitors to another virtual Sunday school class from the Cross Comprehensive Review of Sacred Scripture. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, hallowed be your name, for your name is worthy to be praised in all the earth. We thank you, Father, for loving us and for giving your Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for his death, burial, and resurrection for our sins. We thank you, Father, for your grace, your goodness, and your mercy towards us. We ask that you will forgive us of our sins so that we may have fellowship with you, that we may hear from heaven as your word goes forth. Give us ears that we may hear as the Holy Spirit speaks to us. Bless us that we may receive understanding, that we will respond in obedience to your word. We ask that you will bless this class and every class that exalts the name of Jesus. Build us up in your word. Bless us to be a blessing. We pray for the body of Christ as a whole, that we may grow in our relationship with you and with one another. We ask that you will strengthen the under shepherd of this church, that you will bless his family and our church family as a whole. For we all stand in the need. We love you, Lord, and your name is truly worthy to be praised. Father, it is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. The date is July the 24th in the year 2022. To our visitors, our senior pastor, Reverend Larry L. Roundtree II, welcomes you to the New Mount Zion Church family, where we are, with God's grace, changing the world through the love of Christ, one soul at a time. This quarter's theme is, We are God's people. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called us out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. Revelation, the 21st chapter and verse 7, promises, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. He has promised us sonship and relationship. I am Deacon Keith Poe, and I will be serving as the facilitator for today's lesson. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. The hymn, Blessed Assurance, is an anthem for God's people to proclaim to the world that Jesus is our Lord and that he has given us eternal life. Today's lesson scripture is from John, the 11th chapter, verses 17 through 27 and verses 38 through 44. Our lesson focus. God shows us his glory when we believe. A little girl followed her daddy as he walked through a new garden. She stepped exactly where he stepped and said, Daddy, if you don't get mud on your feet, I won't get mud on me. As God's people, we have been entrusted with the responsibility to disciple our children. The most effective aspect of discipleship is our example. We cannot tell our children, do as I say and not as I do and expect God to bless it. Though the Bible says the sins of the father impact our children to the third and fourth generation, thank God there is a legacy of mercy expressed to thousands for those who love God and keep his commandments. Exodus the 20th chapter verses 5 and 6. Our greatest challenge will not come in the church, but in the home. For the sake of our children, we must strive to live a life where we don't get mud on our feet. The Word, Agent of Creation. We are in Unit 2 with the fourth of five studies. With Lesson 8, the Word Resurrects the Dead 
Let us begin. Questions Lazarus, a close friend of Jesus, became seriously ill. His sisters, with whom he lived, sent a message to Jesus, but Jesus, away on a trip, delayed coming. When the Savior arrived, Lazarus was dead. But Jesus desired to use this incident to deploy God's glory for those who believe. By the time Jesus approached the Lazarus house, a big crowd of mourners had surrounded the family. Mary, one of the sisters, sat at home, consumed with grief. But Martha ran out to Jesus and expressed her disappointment in his delayed response. She wanted Jesus to heal her brother. Already, she knew of Jesus' power that God would give Jesus whatever he asked, although she probably had no idea Jesus planned to raise Lazarus from the dead. Answers Jesus assured the grieving sister of her brother's rising again. Martha understood he was referring to all the righteous rising on the last day. But Jesus seized the moment and made one of the greatest declarations in the gospel. I am the resurrection and the life. John, the 11th chapter, verse 25. He boldly stated he could raise dead sinners from spiritual death and dead bodies from the grave. Jesus raising Lazarus is a picture of him raising the bodies of believers when he comes again. Actions Jesus must have startled Martha and everyone when he said to take the stone away that closed Lazarus' tomb. Martha had to prove her active faith in Jesus and cooperate with him before he could raise Lazarus. Jesus did not ask her to move every stone in Israel, only one, to see the glory of God. To see his glory means to gain insight into his reputation, character, and attributes. Our faith is reinforced and our joy is restored. God's Radiance The men obeyed Jesus and removed the stone. Jesus thanked the Father for hearing his prayer, then commanded with a loud voice of authority for Lazarus to come out. Lazarus had to walk out of that grave at the sound of the Redeemer's voice. As with Martha, our Father allows us to see God at work in hopeless situations. If we believe Jesus' words, we are bound to see the character and faithfulness of God. That is God's glory. Section 1 is a life need and is intended for a small group discussion. We are asked to discuss how the glory of God can be seen. After reading the narrative in the student book, The Word Resurrects the Dead, how will you respond to the following questions? Question 1. Why are people who do not believe in God unable to see His glory? Question 1 clearly implies that people who refuse to believe and therefore submit to God cannot possibly be a witness to the glory of Almighty God. Such people have chosen to be spiritually blind, and therefore they turn away from seeing God and His glory. Question 2. Why is it not enough to attend church and observe Christian holy days to be able to see God's glory? Question 2 
is that not all church attenders and people who claim to be Christians believe in God enough to place their full trust in Christ and fully surrender their lives to his lordship. Of course, the faith of every Christian wavers now and then, but authentic Christians are sincere in their belief in him and sacrificial in their service to him. Those are the ones who truly see the glory of God. And question three, how has God shown you his glory? Question three provides us the opportunity to recall special moments when we saw the glory of God. Some may say it was when they received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Others may note that it was when they experienced God's miraculous intervention in their lives. And still others may relate a time when the Lord bestowed a life-changing revelation to them. Section 2 is the Bible Learning Study Jesus' Teaching and Miracle in Bethany For a long time, Jesus had wanted to visit his dear friends Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, but the timing had to be perfect before he could call upon this family in Bethany. God's plan was for his son to perform a miracle that would demonstrate his glory so that Jesus' fame would spread throughout Judea, even unto Jerusalem, where the Jewish authorities would then plot for his execution. Meanwhile, more and more Jews would continue to see God's glory by believing in Christ. Jesus arrives in Bethany. Our lesson scripture begins in John the 11th chapter verses 17 through 19 from the King James Version. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem about 15 furlongs off. Verse 19, And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. By the time Jesus had come to Martha and Mary's home, their brother Lazarus had already passed away and was in his tomb for four days. The home of this family was in Bethany, which was less than two miles from Jerusalem, Jesus' actual destination. Meanwhile, relatives and friends had gathered there to mourn Lazarus' death and bring solace to his sisters. Question 4. What event created the need for Mary and Martha to be consoled? The sisters had experienced the loss of their beloved brother. He had been dead for four days. By then, many of their Jewish friends and relatives visited to comfort the sisters over the death of Lazarus. The Friends of Jesus Likely, Mary and Martha and their brother Lazarus were among Jesus' most devoted followers. Along with the episode in John the 11th chapter, Mary and Martha are mentioned in Luke the 10th chapter, verses 38 through 42. When Jesus and his disciples came to the village of Bethany near Jerusalem, the sisters welcomed the group into their home. Mary sat down in front of Jesus to hear what he said. Martha, however, busied herself preparing a meal for her guest. She also complained to Jesus that Mary was not offering any help and insisted that Jesus order Mary to help ready the dinner. Jesus calmly noted that Mary was preoccupied and distressed by many concerns. Yet, in her anxiety, Martha neglected 
the most important priority, namely Jesus and his teachings. In contrast, Mary had not allowed daily worries to distract her from spending time with Jesus. Mary realized that listening to Jesus was an extraordinary opportunity, one that exceeded all other matters. For this reason, Mary would not let her relationship to Jesus take second place. A little background on Bethany. During Jesus' day, the former village of Bethany was located in the West Bank on the southeastern slope of the Mount of Olives, less than two miles from Jerusalem. Biblical scholars are not in agreement as to the meaning of the word Bethany. Some contend that it means house of welcome. Others assert that it means house of figs. Still others define it to mean house of affliction. There are several reasons why Bethany is notable in Jesus' public career. Not only did Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead, see John the 11th chapter verses 38 through 44, but in the house of Simon the leper, a woman anointed Jesus with oil, see Matthew the 26th chapter verses 6 through 13, and Mark the 14th chapter verses 3 through 9. Most notably, in the vicinity of Bethany, Jesus ascended into heaven. See Luke, the 24th chapter, verses 50 and 51. Jesus talks with Martha. John, the 11th chapter, verses 20 through 27. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Verse 27. She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. When Martha and Mary heard that Jesus was approaching their home, Martha rushed out to meet him while Mary remained indoors. Mary's countenance, however, did not reflect a welcoming greeting, but instead a subtle disappointment in his seeming tardiness. In fact, Martha verbalized her bitterness by noting that had Jesus arrived sooner, her brother might still be alive, for Jesus was widely known as a remarkable healer. Nevertheless, Martha did not allow her discontent to overwhelm her faith in her friend. Instead, she confessed that the Lord God did perform miracles through him. That is when Jesus promised that Lazarus shall rise again. Martha misunderstood Jesus noting that God will resurrect Lazarus on the last day. But Jesus declared that he is the resurrection and the life, 
and that whoever believes in him will live forever, even beyond death. Jesus then asked Martha whether she believed his words, which she did proclaiming Jesus to be the Messiah and the Son of God who has come into the world. Question 5. How did Martha and Mary's response to Jesus' arrival contrast? Both of the sisters likely learned at the same time that Jesus was on his way to see them. On the one hand, Martha left the house to meet Jesus. On the other hand, Mary remained at home. Question 6. What did Martha say to Jesus when the two saw each other? Once Jesus had arrived, Martha respectfully addressed Jesus as Lord. Next, Martha expressed some disappointment that Jesus could not have come sooner. Martha even went as far as saying that if Jesus had been on the scene much earlier, he could have prevented Lazarus from dying. Question 7. How did Martha respond to Jesus' declaration to be the resurrection and the life of John, the 11th chapter, verse 25? Martha did not seem to fully grasp the implication of Jesus' assertion. For instance, Martha did not make an immediate connection between Jesus' statement and his ability to restore Lazarus to life. Instead, Martha only went as far as affirming Jesus' messiahship, sonship, and presence among his ethnic Jewish peers. Jesus Restores Lazarus to Life John, the 11th chapter verses 38 through 44. Jesus therefore again groaning in himself cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee, that, if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Verse 44. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin, Jesus saith unto them, Loose him, and let him go. When Jesus arrived at the tomb where the body of Lazarus lay, Jesus was visibly shaken by his friend's death. Jesus then ordered that the huge stone be moved away from the tomb's entrance. At this point, Martha, as well as everyone else who was present, still did not grasp Jesus' intention, for she stated that a stench would come from the tomb since Lazarus had died four days earlier. In response, Jesus reminded Martha that he had the power to display the glory of God. After they removed the stone, Jesus gazed upward and thanked his heavenly Father for always listening to him and for the miracle he was about to perform that would show the onlookers that he had surely sent him.
after Jesus commanded Lazarus to come out of the tomb, the dead man obeyed though still wrapped in burial garments. The Lord then told the mourners to remove the linen strips from Lazarus's hands, feet, and head and let him go. Question 8. How did Martha respond when Jesus ordered the stone to be removed? Martha's statement seems to be filled with surprise. She was fixated on the fact that Lazarus had been dead for four days and that there would be a stench from his decomposing corpse. Martha did not yet understand that Jesus was about to restore Lazarus to life. Question 9. What happened when Jesus commanded that Lazarus come out of the tomb? Once Jesus issued the command, the unthinkable took place. Lazarus' body was restored to life. Indeed, he was so revitalized that he was able to stand up and exit the burial chamber, even though his hands and feet were bound by strips of linen. First Century Jewish Beliefs about death. In the first century AD, there was a Jewish belief that a person's soul hovered over the deceased body for the first three days. Supposedly, during this time, the soul waited for an opportunity to re enter the corpse. Yet, by the fourth day, once irreversible decomposition had set in, the soul departed. The preceding view might have originated from situations in which people who allegedly had died were really in a coma. So waiting a few days before burying a loved one would clarify whether that individual had truly died or was just in a temporary state of rest. In the case of Lazarus, it was presumed that once he had been dead for four days, all hope for his revival was gone. John, the 11th chapter, verses 38 and 39. And lastly, important truths about Christ. The truth about the resurrection is just one of many revealed in John's gospel. Even more strongly than the other three gospels, the fourth one makes a compelling case for the deity of Christ. Readers learn that Jesus, the Word, is God. The first chapter, verse 1. Who came to earth as a man. Verse 14. The fourth gospel also expresses uniqueness of the Son's relationship with the Father. The Son existed in eternity past with the Father was sent by the Father into the world and returned to the Father after the crucifixion and resurrection events. The statements and miracles recorded in John's Gospel convincingly show that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that He is worthy of trust and worship. The 20th chapter, verses 30 and 31. This last point suggests that John had both an evangelistic and apologetic purpose in writing his gospel. The author used contrasting ideas such as life and death, light and darkness, love and hate, and being from below and from above to convey important truths about the person and work of Christ. The evangelist also sought to stress the necessity of believing in the Son for eternal life. Section 3 is the Bible Application 
comprehend how dynamic God's glory is. After reading the paragraphs under the heading, Behold the glory of God in your student book, how will you answer the following questions? Question 10. Would you be more excited to step on the surface of the moon or to walk where Jesus walked? Question 11. What does it mean to you to believe in Jesus? And question 12. Why is it important to you to be able to see God's glory? Some might view stepping where Jesus walked in the same way as Armstrong did. Others might consider the fabulous uniqueness of walking on the moon, and still others might regard both experiences as incomparably significant. It is always worth looking at the intimacy of our relationship with Jesus and how that relationship impacts our lives. We also need to think not only of God's existence, but of his majesty as well. Something we probably rarely do. Section 4 is our life response. See the glory of Jesus as you serve him. We must always remember that the source of God's glory is God himself. Therefore, our praise and gratitude must always be given to God and our belief in Jesus must always be anchored on who he is as God's beloved son. With such belief, the glory of God will be visible and his majesty will be known. I encourage you to read Believe and See in the Comprehensive Bible Study and fill in the sentences there. You may have seen God's glory in a recent healing or in his expressions of mercy and love to you. This week, you may have the opportunity to show mercy, grace, and love to others and so reflect his glory in your witness. The key verse of our day's lesson, John, the 11th chapter, verses 25 and 26. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? To God be the glory. We thank and praise God for blessing us with another opportunity to share in the study of his holy word. We invite you to join us each Sunday in the Life Center for one hour beginning at 8.30 a.m. for a combined adult Sunday school class. And if you can't make it, we encourage you to join us for our next scheduled virtual Sunday school class lesson. John, the 14th chapter, verses 15 through 29. Be purposeful in trying to see the steps you take through the eyes of your children. Illuminate the right path for them. Let us close out our day's session as we look to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for each student and for each moment we have seen and experienced your glory in our lives. We ask that you will deepen our faith in Jesus. Build us up in your word so that you will receive all the glory and all the praise. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be blessed, be safe, and be mindful that we are God's people.